Hello, everyone. Welcome to part two on how to achieve seamless operations with GKE load balancing. Please check out the link in the description below for part one of this video series that talks about GKE load balancers and the different load balancing options available for GKE clusters. The content creators for this video are Ashwarya Rajiv and Shaquille Ahmed Siddiqui, who are technical account managers for Google Cloud Consulting. They are specialized in Google Kubernetes Engine and networking. This video covers the best practices for setting up load balancers, health checking and pod lifecycle, and load balancers to be used for cluster node operations. So let's get started. After choosing the right GKE load balancer for your needs, the next step would be to understand the best practices to configure either a layer four or layer seven load balancer. The first best practice to set up a layer seven load balancer is to keep the container native load balancing on, which is configured by default. Container native load balancer is a great way to get started with layer seven load balancing on GKE. It's easy to use and provides good performance and reliability. And hence there is no need to disable it unless you have a specific reason to do so. Next, Google will not infer the correct health check for your HTTPS services. Hence you will have to describe it with a backend config using ingress or GCP backend policy with gateway. Container native load balancer uses the health checks you define in your ingress or gateway resources to determine whether your pods are healthy and able to serve traffic. If you don't define any health checks, container native load balancer will use a default health check. However, the default health check is not always accurate or comprehensive. Hence, it is best to define your own health checks to ensure your pods are only exposed to traffic when they are healthy. If you need to have advanced traffic management capabilities or more managed certificates while using layer seven load balancers, use Gateway API. Gateway API supports the most up-to-date HTTPS load balancers. Gateway API is a more powerful API than Ingress and it supports advanced traffic management features such as Canary releases and more managed certificates than Ingress. The first best practice for a layer four load balancer is to use a GKE load balancer controller Use GKE subsetting for layer four internal load balancers. However, it is not available by default for layer four load balancers and must be used as an add-on. Next, use regional backend services, which require an annotation instead of target pool. Regional load balancers are more scalable and resilient than zonal load balancers. Use a local external traffic policy only when you need to preserve the client IP. Use standalone network endpoint group plus load balancer if you need a layer four proxy load balancer. To use standalone network endpoint groups plus load balancer, create a network endpoint group and associate it with a load balancer. Let us now look at some best practices that need to be followed while serving applications using load balancers. While creating external and internal applications, make sure you use the right load balancer type and set the options correctly. Use container native load balancing and appropriate GKE resources, health checks, and backend services for efficient handling of HTTPS traffic, both internally and externally. Moving on, it's important to understand that there are particular sequences of events that occur when pods are created and destroyed. The state of a pod and its contained applications is determined by a variety of signals that will tell the GKE platform when and when not to serve traffic to a pod instance. This has downstream implications on whether traffic reaches a healthy and ready pod and can directly impact the user experience. Let's now learn about the entire pod lifecycle and the different health checks that can be configured. Like individual application containers, pods are considered relatively ephemeral rather than durable. When a user or controller such as an autoscaler initiates the creation of a pod that belongs to a service, controllers react independently to the event in the following ways. As seen, Kubelet flow, marked in green dotted lines, where the kubelet watches the API server for pod resources. Endpoint controller flow, marked in yellow dotted lines, where the endpoint controller watches for pods matching service label selectors. When a matching pod is ready, it's added as an endpoint to a service. The controller modifies endpoint resources in the API server. Network endpoint group controller flow, marked in red dotted lines, which monitors the API server for pod, endpoints, and service resources. Pods may shut down for a variety of reasons. Shutdown can be initiated by the pod's controller, scaling down, updating an image, or through failure, pod, node, etc. When the kubelet receives notification of the pod's termination, it starts the shutdown sequence. When the endpoint controller receives notification of the pod termination, it removes the pod's IPs. 
Endpoints to all the services that match the pod and the network endpoint group controller leverage their own external Google Compute Engine health check to determine pod health. In GKE, there are two types of health checks that are used to determine the readiness of pods. The GKE ingress controller uses Kubernetes liveness and readiness probes to determine the state of a pod behind a load balancer. The result influences the pod readiness, which indicates to Kubernetes whether pods must be rescheduled. This probe also indirectly influences the endpoints that appear in a network endpoint group and to identify when a container is ready to start accepting traffic. Additionally, you can use the kubectl drain command to safely evict all of your pods from a node and will respect the pod distribution budgets that you have specified. To summarize, load balancing and health checks work together to seamlessly distribute traffic. Next, let's explore the cluster node operations and the best load balancer type to be used for each case. There are four different scaling operations available for the clusters, being horizontal pod autoscaler, vertical pod autoscaler, cluster autoscaler, and node auto-provisioning. Horizontal pod autoscaling, HPA, and vertical pod autoscaling, VPA, are two different ways to scale your Kubernetes workloads. HPA automatically adds or removes pods to a deployment or replication controller based on CPU utilization. VPA automatically increases or decreases the resources allocated to a pod based on CPU utilization. Cluster autoscaler and node auto-provisioning are Kubernetes features that can help you automatically scale your Kubernetes cluster. Cluster autoscaler automatically adds or removes nodes from your cluster based on resource demand. Node auto-provisioning automatically creates new node pools when needed. If we are looking to achieve load balancer-based autoscaling, we will need to create a horizontal pod autoscaling object. Load balancer-based autoscaling scales your pods based on the number of requests received by a load balancer. This can be useful for applications that experience spikes in traffic, as you can automatically add more pods to handle the increased load. The HPA object specifies the desired number of pods, the target metric, and the scaling policy. HPA uses target metrics to scale the number of pods. The scaling policy specifies how the HPA will scale the number of pods. Once you have created the HPA object, Kubernetes will automatically scale the number of pods in your deployment based on the target metric and the scaling policy. If you are using Kubernetes, we recommend that you consider load balancer-based auto-scaling to improve the performance, scalability, and reliability of your applications. As we have seen previously, GKE's cluster autoscaler automatically resizes the number of nodes in a node pool based on demand. This can increase availability and control costs. You specify a minimum and maximum size, and the rest is automatic. However, workloads may experience transient disruption during autoscaling. Therefore, to target pods running on node pools with cluster autoscaler enabled, use container-native load balancers. Finally, let's describe preemptible virtual machines, VMs, and the kind of load balancing to be used. Preemptible VMs are priced lower than standard VMs and provide no guarantee of availability. They offer similar functionality to spot VMs, but only last up to 24 hours after creation. Since there is no availability guarantee, it's recommended that you use container-native load balancing for backend pods running on preemptible nodes. In addition, you can be more aggressive and configure a load balancer health check to promptly remove bad endpoints. You have reached the end of this video. We hope you found the content informative and useful. Check out the links in the description to learn more about load balancing in GKE, or take some Google Cloud Skills Boost hands-on labs on load balancing. Happy cloud computing!